With all of these new preseason changes, teams are playing in completely different ways. Hey, what's going on Summoners? My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be diving into our Season 13 Support Guide. The support role hasn't gotten any massive direct changes like the other roles in the preseason. They unfortunately weren't blessed with all new items to play with. That being said, Riot shifted a lot of pressure towards the top side of the map and has made supports powerful roamers once again. While this playstyle was exclusively seen at higher ranks, it seems it'll now be a required skill for anyone looking to climb. In today's video, we're going to be covering the purpose of the support role, how the new season has impacted them, why enchanters and mages have become so popular, and we'll even be breaking down the different playstyles they all have. If you're looking to climb next season as a support player, be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video. Regardless, let's not waste any more time and dive right in. Before we can dive into an actual guide for the support role, we should break down what the role really means in the grand scheme of things. In most MOBAs, including League, every role serves a significant purpose and offers a variety of different playstyles to fulfill their primary goal. In League of Legends, we have five different roles and each one has a main goal in mind that they're always trying to meet. Of course, there are a few outliers at times, but overall, the goal is consistent no matter the playstyle. If you're a top laner, you're likely looking to create pressure for your allies. This pressure can be provided by being a frontline tank that can CC the enemy and soak damage for your allies. You can also generate pressure by being a split pushing menace that looks to take multiple towers at a time if left alone for too long. There are even some top laners that generate pressure by diving into the backline with their high mobility damage and survivability. Regardless of if you're looking to play Ornn, Fiora or Riven, your primary and overall goal remains the same. This is consistent across each role as well. Moving into the jungle, their primary goal is to secure objectives and get their teams ahead. Some junglers like Kindred do this by getting themselves a lead and playing for skirmishes. Others like Nunu really just want to repeat gank and secure dragons and heralds. There are even a few oddballs that do a mix of both or none of the above, such as Ivern. In mid lane, you're a central piece to the map. This means that you can impact the map in any way you want. Some champions offer amazing skirmish potential and want to follow their jungler around for 2v2s and 3v3s. Others want to gain a lead and snowball themselves and their allies by roaming. There are even champions that thrive in just creating space for their allies and securing wave priority as control mages. AD carries are no different than any of the other roles. Their primary goal is to pump out DPS and burn through objectives. They can opt for multiple playstyles to accomplish this. Some marksmen are great at taking turrets, like Caitlyn. Others can shred through entire teams like Jinx, and some even just prefer to provide utility for their allies like Ash. With a ton of playstyles to choose from, they can become 1v9 machines or help out their allies and regardless of their choice, they will always meet their goal of consistent damage and objective security. Speaking of all these roles, let's finally take some time to talk about the purpose of a support. As a support, you have two primary goals. One is to provide vision control for your team. Supports are one of the only roles in the game that can consistently place multiple wards around the map. These wards are not to be underestimated. League is a game that is played based on information. If you see the enemy on an objective, you can force a play on the opposite side of the map. If you clear out the enemy's vision, they're forced to walk through the fog of war and can possibly be caught out by your team. You can even ward the enemy jungle to spot them early and save your allies from ganks. As a support, you are the key to getting your allies control of the map through vision. Your second goal is to provide, well, support for your team. This can be done in a ton of different ways, but it varies on your choice of support champion. We'll be diving into them more in depth later on, but there are a ton of options. From enchanters to engage tanks to everything in between, they all share the same goal. Regardless of which one you choose, you'll always be looking to help your allies out in one way or another. Before we continue on, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Returning to our guide, we want to take a minute to look at how Season 13 has impacted supports as a whole. As previously stated, supports have always been known for their vision control and their ability to help out their team. 
In the past, supports constantly stuck with their laner and occasionally played with their jungler for vision control and or objectives. Leading up to this preseason, more and more support mains are beginning to embrace roam timers. Made popular during Worlds, supports have begun roaming towards mid in order to gain vision control and take aggressive fights. This has caused mid laners to constantly have to be aware of the enemy support when trying to look for plays. When you add in the fact that junglers are often hovering around mid, you've got the potential for constant 3v3 skirmishes and a few game-changing fights while your AD carry safely farms in the bot lane. Season 13 introduced a handful of new items for tanks, juggernauts, and bruisers. Alongside this, there has been an increase in experience and multiple buffs that incentivize playing towards the top side. With how powerful and necessary some AD carries are at the moment, it's hard to play towards top without setting your own bot lane behind. To remedy this, supports are starting to take strong roam timers in order to secure vision control and help their allies rotate towards Herald and set up dives. This is often done after the bot lane crashes their wave and resets. The support can safely take a roam timer because the wave will begin slow pushing back towards their AD carry. They just have to be sure that the wave doesn't grow too quickly or else a dive could ensue. The new season is going to continue to encourage supports to roam, so be sure to get into that habit. That being said, do not take bad roam timers. Always be sure the wave is in a good spot for your AD carry and let them know a rough estimate of when you'll be back. The absolute last thing you want is to roam and get your top set ahead while your bot lane gets demolished. Speaking of the new items, supports unfortunately aren't able to build a majority of them due to their insanely high prices. That being said, Chemtech Putrefier and Thornmail are going to continue being must-build items for supports due to the increase in tanky enemies and sustain. While the shift towards attack speed based marksmen as well as enemies having far more resistances, we can easily see Ardent slowly re-entering the meta as well. Damage mages have become far more popular alongside this thanks to their ability to 1v2 the bot lane and generate a ton of pressure for their team. Plus, having an additional damage source is always beneficial when facing tankier enemies. This is why champions like Heimerdinger and Brand were dominating high challenger games. Overall, in terms of itemization, not much has changed for support. You'll likely be building your Mythic, Anti-Heal, your Situational Utility item and the Watchful Wardstone. On every support besides damage-oriented ones, Watchful Wardstone can be a game-changer. Be sure to take advantage of it if the game stalls long enough. You not only get some amazing free stats, but you'll also be able to carry more pink wards and you'll have the amount of wards placed on the map increased by one. Remember summoners, vision wins games. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is one league feature you miss the most? Personally, I miss having a 1% crit rune in my rune page. It was never significant, but it always made me laugh when I would randomly crit someone thanks to that small rune. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comments section down below what your favorite is and why. Nonetheless, let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back in, let's take a moment to break down all of the different support playstyles and what they provide for both you and your team. We've briefly covered them already, but there's far more we can talk about in depth. While we won't be able to cover all of them due to the few unique cases like Heimerdinger or Fasting Senna, we'll be sure to cover the priority ones so you can be prepared for next season. Starting us off strong, we've got our first major playstyle of Enchanters. During the preseason, Enchanters have reached an all-time high and are some of the strongest champions in the game. They are picked due to their insane ability to provide heals, shields, and other key utilities for their allies. While most Enchanters are fairly weak in the early game, they're still able to hold their own against most champions due to their decent base damage. Pair this with their sustain and utility and you've got a support that can steadily flow from the early game into a powerful late game pick. While some scale better than others, they all do the same general job. Someone like Yumi only looks to support a single ally by increasing their stats and providing massive amounts of heals. This is different than someone like Karma, who provides her entire team with a variety of tools and can create a ton of lane pressure. You can even find champions that offer a mix of both, like Lulu, who has a decently strong laning phase, strong single target buffs, and the ability to polymorph an enemy. Regardless of who you choose, these champions are meant to directly support their allies and are the literal embodiment of a support champion. Next up, we've got our Engage and Peel tanks, which are a classic for our support players out there. Going all the way back to the beginning of League of Legends, champions like Alistar dominated the game thanks to their high crowd control and nearly unkillable stats. 
While engaged tanks aren't what they once were, they are still powerful options in the right hands. These champions are looking to skirmish early game and are often paired with high damage marksmen. Their CC and damage allow them to catch enemies off guard and eliminate targets one by one. Whether it's in the 2v2 or a random dragon skirmish, engaged tanks are sure to lock down the priority targets so their allies can follow up. Champions like Leona, Nautilus or Rel do a great job at diving into the enemy and disrupting the battlefield. There are also some champions like Alistar or Braum that are great at peeling enemies off their allies while also being a beefy enough frontliner for their AD carries to play around. These champions offer strong early games in most cases but aren't able to scale as hard as enchanters. That being said, their high playmaking potential more than makes up for it. Overall, if you're looking to be a tanky frontline that locks down enemies and protects their allies, you'll enjoy being an engage and peel tank. For our final primary playstyle, we've got our damage-based supports. As we said before, these supports are often undervalued since they're not your stereotypical support. They don't offer the same level of utility as your other options, but they make up for it with damage and pressure. These champions look to help your allies out by deleting priority targets and dealing a massive amount of damage from the sidelines. The enemy will likely have to choose if they want to take you out or another carry, and regardless, your team will still have a strong damage dealer alive. Damage-based supports are fairly cut and dry and don't offer many subcategories, but there are still a few. You can play to be tank shred and punish short-range marksmen with someone like Brand, you can opt for high amounts of poke and dealing with long-range targets with someone like Xerath. There's even a way for you to do a combination of both with Velkos. No matter the playstyle you decide to go for, these champions are sure to offer you some early game pressure and some amazing late game damage. Do not underestimate the power of damage space supports. They're often some of the best counters to meta champions and might be just what you need to round out your team composition. While we did cover most of the primary playstyles and their multiple subcategories, they can still be broken down further. We won't be diving into them today, but we'll mention a few that are worth noting. There are champions such as Rakan who embrace a mixed playstyle of enchanter and engaged tank. Someone like Bard who looks to dominate lane with damage, roam a lot and provide utility. There are even niche support picks like Ash or Heimerdinger that look to dominate the laning phase off pressure and translate that lead into objective control. Regardless of which champion or playstyle you choose from, just remember what your overall goal is as a support. Bringing us to the end of our video, let's talk about a few key skills you should look to master. As a support, wave management may not seem as important, but it is vital to understand. You need to know how the wave is moving and where it'll be so that you can plan your roam timers, vision control, and jungle ganks. Don't skip out on wave management just because you're a support and don't CS. Next, it's important to understand the power of vision control and where to place wards. You should always have vision around the side of the map that you and your allies are playing around. Be sure to secure wave push, then move in to clear enemy vision and drop your own wards. Finally, Season 13 is really gonna ramp up support roams. Knowing when to roam and when to stay in lane is going to be game changing. Your roam can win your team the game if timed properly, but if you walk around aimlessly, you can set your bot lane behind for no reason. Be sure to have your wave prepped and vision set up before you look to roam around the map. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, good luck on the rift.